Women's Six Nations for 2022 is done and dusted, folks. And kind of not surprisingly, I think we saw the best round in this final round. All these games relatively close. A 12-point margin being the biggest one. That being the, uh, the deciding match where England secured their Grand Slam. But, I mean, overall thoughts on the tournament to start with. Um, obviously, the games are still a bit lopsided. But I think if there's one thing we've seen about how dominant this England side has been is the awareness or the um, the decisions from some of the other countries to to get players on professional contracts. We now see Italy has moved in that direction. Wales has got some of their players. I think Ireland's still making moves. I'm not sure what the deal is with Scotland. Um, I know here in New Zealand, when the Black Ferns got walloped last year, they certainly moved in that direction as well. So, yeah, I think everyone has seen the benefits. I think from the crowds, you've seen the interest levels are there. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's now time to get more players playing professionally and try to catch up where the, uh, where the English players are at. There's a truck reversing somewhere. Um, the first game, it wasn't actually the first game, but um, Ireland and Scotland, it was the closest of the games, went right down to the wire with Ireland sneaking this one at the death. Took till the 83rd minute. Uh, it was certainly a bit of a tit-for-tat one. Scotland with the mall try early on of three minutes. 5-0 um, misconversion, which is kind of costly in this one. It was wet, though, to be fair. Um, Irish penalty answers back, so 5-3. Um, there was a missed penalty to Ireland not long later, so it's another one where if they'd got that kick earlier, uh, may have... It's always that way with rugby, isn't it? If you miss those kicks... Or you get them, it can make the game play out in a different way. But they did miss it. They didn't miss the last one, which was the one that mattered. Um, more time Ireland on 38 minutes, which had been coming as well. And a fair few more tries this weekend across multiple competitions. We're seeing loads of high-scoring hookers and other forwards right from malls. It just seems to be uh, the kind of in-vogue thing at the moment that defences are uh, struggling to shut down. But yeah, man, it was like 8-5 to Ireland. And then Nelson leveled the score. Second half, 8 Eight, then 11 8 so you know ticking the scoreboard along with the scots um another one made it 14 8 so that was a really low kind of drill kick from nelson 14 8 it was starting to look like it was maybe going to be a bridge too far for the irish to come back but man did they put on a heap of pressure at the um the kind of final 10 minutes i mean scotland were winning penalties at the breakdown to kind of get themselves out of trouble but um yeah i mean ireland had to chase the game they would kick for touch get turned over, um, they got charged down the Scots, the Irish had a five metre scrum, they got turned over, they uh, had a third chance where they got pushed into touch and it was the fourth chance where they finally, after some phases and with advantage, managed to go over the Irish um, after the line out. Um, that one was through Breen on 83 minutes, so it took some, it took some doing. The Scottish defence wasn't breaking down easily, but eventually it's done. And then the conversion to win it. Not the hardest kick, but the pressure kick. But uh, they still got it done. So, I mean, yeah, good good game. Really close. Ireland, more possession, more territory. 55% and 63%. Um, the breakdown steal, 6-2 to two in favor of the Scots. They were really just monstering. Um, the Irish conceded 13 penalties to Scotland's 9. Line breaks were pretty hard to come by, 1 apiece. Um, but yeah, the number eights, man. Hannah O'Connor, not only did she kick a penalty, but 93 on metres, three defenders beaten. Um, Evie Gallagher, the number eight, three defenders beaten, 23 out of 23 tackles. But unfortunately for the Scots, they go winless in this campaign, sixth, but it was close, pretty close. And um, the Irish finished two and three, like three of the teams. Um, good enough for fourth to end their campaign. So congratulations to Ireland. For keeping on fighting, Scotland almost got it done. Pretty uh, interesting end to the campaign. The next one, Wales and Italy. Um, Italy, man, getting the job done. Um, in a pretty low scoring one, to be fair. I mean, I think that's like the double, isn't it? Because um, the Italy men got the job done in, in Cardiff as well. So, yeah, congratulations to the Italians. It was kind of few and far between with the chances. Although there were line breaks. But nobody was able to convert anything early. Um, there was a yellow card for a high tackle from Robin uh, Wilkins. And then another one that was Harry's who got yellow carded. So at, a, at one time, the Welsh team are down to 13 players on the field. Not ideal. 
and it did take a lot of effort, but the Italians eventually got there against 13 players. Um, Baraton gets over on 31 minutes, but as I said, it, it took some it took some hands and it took some some patience. So seven nil to the Italians. That's the score at halftime. Both sides really failing to convert their chances was my note because there were chances, but there was that lack of clinical edge. Wales opted for three on 70 because they just had to get some points from their pressure. 7-3, and then Wales actually scored a try. They finally had some quick ball going to take the lead with, like, how many minutes to play? Four minutes by the time the conversion uh, is kicked. Or missed. But, um, yeah, 8-7. But then 79 minutes, Wales are offside. Not long after kicking it out on the full. They passed it back to their own 22, kicked it out, so that gives the Italians an attacking opportunity. Wales are offside. Um, Italy opt for the points and they kick him. So it's a pressure kick, but it goes over. Gets the job done at the death. So yeah, man. Points per visit, per visit, per 22 to the 22 is low, man. 0.5 for Wales, 0.9 for Italy. Like that's exceptionally low. That's what I'm saying. There were chances, but they just couldn't finish them. Uh, Wales win five turnovers. Italy win eight. So that's maybe the order of the day. There were five clean breaks to two in favor of Wales. So like I said, they were cutting teams to bits. Remember, it was 1-1 in that first game. Um, so to have seven in this game is a lot higher. But the Italians, five dominant tackles to none. Um, Jasmine Joyce is still elusive, man. 158 run meters, 14 carries. That's a good return rate. The prop, um, Lucia Guy. 22 out of 22 tackles for the Italians. So, yeah, low-scoring game. But, man, two points. Goes right down to the death. And, um, yeah, both sides finished with two and three records, but fifth and third on the table. So, yeah, all those teams are kind of there or thereabouts, those four. So it was pleasing to see them play each other. Uh, the big important one was the, the one for the Grand Slam. Whoever won this one was going to get that Grand Slam, France and England. Uh, and it's England 24-12. I was a little worried. I mean, I was happy at the start because obviously England have just been all conquering for ages. Um, France get the early try. The crowd's really getting behind them. They're playing with tempo. They're up seven points to nil. And I'm thinking, right, France, home, early lead. Maybe they can put this English side under pressure because England haven't really been under any pressure much. They've had like maybe one poor half of rugby the whole, the whole tournament. So... France put them under a bit of pressure, but then it's just like bang, bang, bang. Three tries for England. It's all from the forwards. It's a maul. Took a while, but the maul goes over for the first one, then another one a few minutes later, and then another one. After a yellow card warning as well, to be fair. So three maul tries for that English pack. And given the rate of scoring, 11 minutes, 16 and 25, it looks like England is going to absolutely run riot. So I was... I was Almost starting to kind of like, oh, for goodness sake, kind of check out a little bit. But no, the game certainly wasn't over because that's the last try uh, the English managed to score. Um, France finally managed to escape their own half after being under a heap of pressure on about half an hour and did put some pressure on England but, but failed to score. So it's 21-7 at half time. But look at the score. England only scored three more points. So... Um, France continued that momentum from the first half, put some more pressure on. There's a yellow card for um, for Zoe Harrison for a deliberate knock-on. Um, but can France score during the yellow card? No, they can't. Then the French get a yellow card for essentially the same thing. Can they score when they're down to 14 players? For some reason, yes. They, they have a maul of their own. Um, one, pays, uh, one pass wide from that one, and uh, they go over. So that makes it 24-12. But that is the uh, that is the final score. So second half was certainly interesting. Watch obviously the penalty in there as well um, for England. But yeah, they certainly weren't able to dominate this game. But they absolutely dominated that kind of key period of the first half, and their defence was able to um, to to keep the French out. So I mean, yeah, points per visit to twenty two. England three point four, France one point three. So just clinical in that period where they had the ascendancy in that first half. But maybe just looking a little bit more, I don't want to say beatable, but 24-12, if a couple of things go a different way, it's a, it's a different game. Obviously, England are still all conquering, man. They get the Grand Slam. Um, they've got an amazing record this season. But yeah, certainly France troubled them like we haven't seen them be troubled at all this season. So, I mean, their first yellow card, they concede a couple of tries. 
Um, they're kept to three points and a half. So, yeah, that's uh, encouraging for the rest of the teams anyway with the World Cup this year. Um, turnovers one, six to England, three to France. So that's a key area for the English. Um, line-out steals is four to one with Zoe Oldcroft getting three of those. She was immense. Uh, Malls 13 to eight with England having 13. So it was a big part of the game. So Suisse is still a key player. Uh, 73 on metres, two defenders beaten. Um, she did get hurt at one point in the game, but seemed to bounce back all right. Allcroft, like I mentioned in the second row for the English, 17 from 17 tackles, plus that work in the lineout. Amazing stuff, man. This England team is going to take some beating, but there's a little bit of hope there from what the French showed us. But anyway, we will see how things go. Like I said, it's been an enjoyable tournament. This is definitely my favorite round because up until this point, most of the games where England and France have been involved have been pretty predictable. I think that's the third game that's been um, the one which goes down to the wire. But this week we genuinely had three proper contests, which was uh, pleasing to see. The French just kind of ran out of time in their game, eh? The English too good. But anyway, you guys let me know your thoughts on the final round and the Six Nations as a whole. How do you think this sets teams up for the World Cup? Like I mentioned, I am encouraged by the number of players who will be getting some kind of professional contract, which is definitely a step in the right direction to improving the game. The crowds have been fantastic. And um, yeah, overall, it's been an enjoyable watch. You guys have any thoughts? And I'll talk to you guys again soon.